ओम नमो भगवते वसुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वसुदेवाय ओम माय बाउ टू द लॉर्ड वसुदेवा जॉय टू यू फ्रेंड्स वी डिस्कसिंग दिस पार्ट इन द um second chapter of the bhagavad gita where krishna is urging arjuna according to the shankya philosophy to be even minded to be cheerful not to be upset by by anything and uh, he says in stanza 28 the periods before birth and after death are veiled from your gaze you are conscious only of that which is visible to your senses why lament a thing you can't see well it's so interesting that the same arguments can be used in opposite ways for example many people will say well uh, i remember i mentioned this poem pride and prejudice in uh, the one that was done by by guru garson and uh, um florence olivier i say that because the script was somewhat written especially for a movie and later versions probably don't have this but lydia who has gone away a run away with some man finally they got they did get married and she's trying to get her older sister as a woman of great sensitivity and sensibility and uh she's trying to get her to felicitate her on her marriage and <clears throat> elizabeth the older sister is saying well i would like to see how you are in 5 years oh 5 years who cares what happens in 5 years Well you can see this could be taken as an argument in that way. Many people say, well, who cares what I did in my last life or who cares what I did in my future life? I'm happy now, but the thing is that your past life has an influence on you. And what you do now, you may uh rob a bank and kill a few people and you may get away with it. You may die a peaceful death as some murderers have done. And they'll say, what does it matter the future? That'll take care of itself. Well, the trouble is it'll also take care of you and uh, those those realities will come about in time so krishna is using the argument of who cares um what happens in 5 years in another way altogether and it's kind of intriguing to see that he's doing so because in fact also why be upset by it what is happening right now is your reality and so from another point of view Yes if you do kill if you do th- steal if you do commit sins and do wrong things you will pay for it but on the other hand if you live rightly don't worry because so many times we the burden of past and present most people are living in the past regretting the past anticipating the fur- future hoping and being very attached to the future it's only if you can live right now and be focused in the present that you can do a good job those who think about um what if i fail half their mind is on what if i fail in fact in that very thought they may fail there's a story my guru told me about a, a disciple a woman disciple of uh, the other swami swami shankara shankaracharya and she was always doubting and one time uh she said to her guru but but what if i fail and uh, what if i die she said and the guru said all right then die and she fell over dead and you might say that was a pretty drastic treatment but the fact is that she kept thinking this way she was attracting it he just let that karma um work itself out whatever you have strongly in your mind you can attract you can attract wealth you can attract poverty if you live in poverty consciousness and think that i'm poor i remember a man who had or had what he needed but he didn't have as much as what he needed and he said i'm poor i'm poor well he had more money than i had and i wasn't grieving the point is don't grieve but when you worry about the future or the past it becomes a burden on your mind which prevents you from able being able to handle your present with uh, to the greatest efficacy now Yes what you are doing will influence the future but it will only be 
really successful if you're doing it the best you can right now. And so basically he's just giving us a piece of perfectly good worldly advice here that do the best you can and let the future take care of itself. This can be, this advice can be good for any businessman, for everyone, but always try to do the best and this is the issue. It isn't that whatever you do now doesn't matter because the future doesn't exist. It will exist. So whether you're th thinking of getting married or taking a job or starting a business or uh, going to some new place in the world or whatever it might be, think first in terms of, is it right? Let the future take care of itself. Will it work? Doesn't, don't enter the picture. If it fails, well, it will fail because of past karma but it will be the most certain to succeed if you put your entire energy into it right now. Therefore, live in the present and be concentrated. In fact, concentration is the key to success. And what we're giving basically is a key to concentration. Because when you, when you can stop grieving and live completely in the present, Master said if you can be happy in the present, you have God. Well, that was perhaps a little bit of an exaggeration, but the more you can be happy, the more you have of God. And remember, everything is relative. So think in terms of here and now. And when you are with friends, don't be thinking, oh, these other friends. I remember when I went to see my grandparents for Christmas many years ago, I was in college, and my brother also came. And my grandparents were good, but very simple people. My grandfather was an optometrist in Tulsa, and his tastes were simple, and he was a very fine man, but not a highly cultured man. And my brother was lamenting the whole time that he had had to leave his cousins and uncle in Ohio who were very much more sophisticated and so on. Well, he couldn't enjoy the Ohio scene because he wasn't there. He couldn't enjoy this scene either in Tulsa. Why not enjoy where you are and... Uh, Make the best of it. The important thing is always to understand that you have before you these two choices, a wrong choice and a right choice. And what can be your criterion of a right choice? Success? No, not necessarily. Because we define success in different ways. A mafioso may think that if I kill that man, I'll succeed, I'll get his money. Well, that's success of a type, but it doesn't give you the happiness that is really the, de I, the, de I, the defining factor in his success. So always ask yourself, will this give me happiness? Will it expand my consciousness? Will it help me to feel greater sympathy for other people so that I can begin to see that I am living in all people? We have to understand these basic truths that we're not just this ego. And so anything that will expand ourselves beyond this ego some people will think, well, what I get is mine, and I'm, that's fine. Others will say, I gain more. It is more blessed to give than to receive. I gain more when I give to others. And this is the truth. So the more you can follow that guideline within yourself that says, this takes me toward happiness, toward a greater expansion of consciousness, toward greater clarity of mind, define your happiness in those ways, and you will know in your heart what is the right decision to make? But you must be here and now. You can't be living past and future and getting all confused about what somebody's doing over in Russia. You have to be right here today in this moment. And with that clarity and calmness of mind, no grieving, no false rejoicing, just being centered, then you can proceed to this battle of Kurukshetra and see that I need to get rid of those qualities because they're keeping me from that peace that I want. And I need to develop these other qualities because in them I will find all the fulfillment I'm seeking. Joy to you.